Hello class! In this video, we will discuss the effective stress concept as a continuation of our discussion on the stresses in a soil mass. Let's consider this figure we have here in our slide. This figure shows a column of saturated soil mass with no seepage of water in any direction. The total stress at the elevation of point A here can be obtained from the saturated unit weight of the soil and the unit weight of the water above it. This uh, total stress can be divided into two parts. First is the portion that is carried by the water in continuous void spaces and Number two, that portion that is carried by the soil solids at their point of contact. The concept of uh, effective stress can be illustrated by drawing a wavy line through the point A that passes through only the points of contact of the solid particles. So, this wavy line. Let's call this wavy line, line AA. And it passes through A and through the points of contact of the solid particles. So we have forces that uh, act at the points of contact of the soil. Let us let this be P1, P2, P3, so on, and Pn. The sum of the vertical components of the forces developed at the points of contact of the solid particles per unit cross-sectional area of the soil mass is called the effective stress. Our effective stress, or as some authors would like to call it intergranular stress, results from particle-to-particle -particle contact of the soil and we express that in this equation. It is the sum of the vertical components of the forces developed at the point of contact of the solid particles per unit cross-sectional area of the soil mass. Here our A is the cross-sectional area of the soil mass under consideration. If we let A sub S equals the cross-sectional area occupied by solid-to-solid -solid contacts, thus A sub S is equal to A sub 1 plus A sub 2 plus A sub 3 to A sub N, then the space occupied by water is our part A or the area of the soil mass under consideration minus A sub S. Hence, our total stress can be expressed as our effective stress plus mu times quantity A bar minus A sub S all over bar A, which is our cross-sectional area of the soil mass under consideration, which we can simplify as our effective stress plus mu times the quantity 1 minus A prime sub S. Take note that your mu here is your pore water pressure or the hydrostatic pressure at A. So that is just your H sub A multiplied by the unit weight of water. And your A prime sub S is this. And that is the fraction of unit cross-sectional area of the soil mass occupied by solid to solid contacts. Take note that A prime sub S here is very small and can be neglected for the pressure ranges generally encountered in practical problems. And therefore, our equation can be further reduced as our total stress is just equal to our effective stress plus mu or our pore water pressure the concept of uh, effective stress or the principle of effective stress was first introduced by Tersagi and Skempton 
introduced the relationship between the total and effective stress in 1960. Okay, so we have here a soil profile and we are asked to solve for total stress, pore water pressure, and the effective stress at point A, B, C, and D. So we have dry sand with a specific gravity equal to 2.68 and a void ratio of 0.6 and clay with a specific gravity equal to 2.72 and void ratio of 0.9. First thing we're going to do is to solve for the dry unit weight of sand. So that is specific gravity times the unit weight of water all over 1 plus uh, void ratio. So that is 2.68 times 9.81 all over 1 plus 0.6. The dry unit weight of our sand is now equal to 16.43 kilonewtons per cubic meter. Saturated unit weight we have specific gravity plus void ratio times unit weight of water all over 1 plus void ratio so that's 2.72 here 2.72 plus 0.9 times 9.81 all over 1 plus 0.9 that's equal to 18.69 kilonewton per cubic meter with this, let us solve for the total stress, pore water pressure, and effective stress at point A, B, C, and D. By mere inspection, we can say that at point A, the total stress is equal to zero, our pore water pressure is equal to zero, and our effective stress is also equal to zero. At point B, our total stress is equal to 2 meters multiplied by the unit weight, dry unit weight of our sand. So that's 2 times 16.43 and our total stress at B is equal to 32.86 kilonewton per cubic meter. Again, our pore water pressure is equal to zero and therefore our effective stress is equal to total stress minus our pore water pressure. That just gives us 32.86 kilonewton per cubic meter. At point C, Our total stress at point C is equal to 4 meters, this 4 meters, multiplied by our dry unit weight of sand. So that's equal to 4 times 16.43. And therefore, our total stress at C is equal to 65.72 kilonewtons per cubic meter. Again, our pore water pressure is equal to zero and therefore our effective stress is also equal to 65.72 kilonewton per cubic meter. Now let's move over to point D. At point D, our total stress is equal to 4 meters. This 4 meters multiplied by our dry unit weight of sand plus 8 meters times our saturated unit weight for clay. Therefore, that is 4 times 16.43 plus 8 times 18.69. And therefore, our total stress at point D is equivalent to 215.24 kilonewton per cubic meter. Now, 
for our pore water pressure at D, that is equal to 8 meters, this 8 meters, multiplied by your unit weight of water, which is 9.81, and our pore water pressure at D is equal to 78.48 kilonewton per cubic meter. Our effective stress is equal to our total stress, which is 215.24, minus our pore water pressure at D, which is 78.48. And that gives us an effective stress at point D, which is equal to 136.76 kilonewton per cubic meter.